thanks for joining us uh, for this uh, evening's notepad. Uh, of course, very shortly, I will be speaking with uh, the Nestle boss uh, regarding the Nestle tie-up with Starbucks. That's happening very shortly from now. But at present, I want to be touching on the issue of the UNHCR's refugee fund. The United Nations body that looks at refugee affairs is called UNHCR. The UNHCR's Refugee Zakat Fund was created to finance its refugee activities via Zakat collection. Today, the Refugee Zakat Fund beat its $26 million US dollar target for this year. This makes it a total of over $38 million from contributions in this first half of the year alone, or about 120 million ringgit. The funds raised from January through June assisted over 600,000 internally displaced individuals and refugees. Joining me right now all the way from Dubai is Shadi Grawi of UNHCR to uh, share more information about this. Uh, Shadi, let's take a, a little bit of a recap into uh, what the Zakat Fund is all about before we jump into the details of it. Definitely. Um, first of all, thank you for actually uh, having me here uh, with you. I would say that UNHCR is very proud of Refugee uh, Zakat Fund, which is a trusted and efficient and Sharia compliant structure that aims to assist the most vulnerable uh, refugees and also IDP uh, families worldwide. The experience with the uh, Zakat for us actually started a while back. Uh, we launched uh, a pilot in uh, 2017. Uh, the pilot lasted for approximately two years, and within these two years, we uh, received uh, about $14.4 million, and we were actually able to assist um, about 6,888 families who are actually Syrians in uh, Jordan and uh, Lebanon. Um, building on that success and being backed up with five fatwas that allow the organization to collect and to also uh, distribute the cap fund, uh, we launched the uh, refugee uh, the cap fund this year, which has actually witnessed, as you have said, a very good success by actually receiving approximately $38.1 million uh, that have enabled us to help so far more than 100,000 displaced families in Jordan, Lebanon, Egypt, Iraq, Yemen, Mauritania, and, uh, uh, and finally Bangladesh. Shadi, do we know where m many of these um, funds are coming from? Um, you mentioned the displaced individuals that has been receiving the funds. We're talking about Jordan, Syria. Uh, but do you know where most of these monies are coming from? Yes, we actually uh, receive the cash funds from uh, different parts of the world. That actually includes uh, MENA. Uh, the UK, Canada, and also Southeast Asia. During the pilot, which was actually in 2017 and 2018, uh, we focused on the MENA uh, region, and we just actually expanded our fundraising operations to be on a global uh, level uh, this year. So um, based on that fact, um, uh, it remains that the highest percentage of the funds that we are actually getting are from the MENA region. And this primarily includes the UAE, Saudi, Qatar, and also Egypt. And we, we, we also witnessed a very interesting trend from the U.S. as well. So, so these are our top five countries where we are receiving the funds from so far. Uh, Shadi, this is extremely interesting because we've, we've heard Islamic finance in the financial uh, sector. We've also heard it being implemented in some philanthropic, uh, I guess, uh, work. But this is, is this the first time that UNHCR is embarking on this Islamic philanthropic program? Um, and will there be more to come? Thank you, actually. This is a very good corner to uh, look at. UNHCR has identified um, its... Uh, strategic alignment with Islamic philanthropy back in 2014. So I would say that the answer is yes, relatively new in this space, but we have made very steady steps towards actually 
enforcing that we are actually a globally trusted and also a transparent Zakat agent that is very openly showcasing how much money we get and how much money we are actually. Uh, and the most important thing is that we are being able to showcase the impact of these funds on the lives of the families worldwide. If you refer to the uh, to the recent report that we launched uh, last week about the mid-year achievements of the uh, Refugee Zakat Fund, you will see that our plan includes expanding our scope beyond the cap. Of course, we will actually continue to focus on it, but we will we are also looking to expand the scope beyond the cap to also include, for example, sadaqa and. We also hope, uh, hope to look into uh, work as well. Uh, Shadi, uh, we got information or a statement coming in from UNHCR very recently that uh, your organization is now revising up your 2019 target by close to 70%. You're looking at to collect about 44 million US dollars, uh, and this is representing close to 280% increase from your 11 million uh, zakat collection that you guys did in 2018. So from 11% million that you guys collected last year, you're revising it to 44 million. Is UNHCR expecting the funds to grow even further because of the demand of people trying to help uh, philanthropic programs using Islamic finance uh, through Zakat? Yes, I mean, this is actually the, the target for uh, the CAP funds that we are hoping to received by the end of uh, this year. I mean, the reason we have uh, revised uh, this target is because we have actually managed to exceed it um, in the first half. So we were aiming to get uh, 26 million. And now um, we got approximately 38.1 million. So we have re uh, revised this figure based on the achievements so far. And we are actually hoping to uh, received 44 million in the, in the CAP fund specifically by the end of this year in order to be able to help more than 1 million people uh, worldwide. This is, of course, um, this is a part of the organization's uh, global budget, which is, which is no less than um, uh, 7.9 7 billion uh, dollars. So we are we are actually witnessing a very interesting growth of the role of Islamic social finance in supporting uh, this, uh, displaced people uh, worldwide who earlier this year, um, um, the number actually of uh, displaced people uh, worldwide has reached um, up, uh, more than 70 million people. So the demands are, are actually high. And the organization is looking into Islamic philanthropy to cover some of the very immediate and very important needs of these people. Shadi, uh, we're <coughs> drawing towards the uh, closure of our conversation here. I just want to bring the conversation back closer to home. Um, how do you think Malaysia and Indonesia, perhaps some of the other uh, countries within ASEAN region, can actually help UNHCR achieve your goals do you think that it's time for you guys to market the fund uh, on how to collect zakat funds here in this part of the world? Yeah, um, South, uh, I mean, uh, Southeast Asian countries um, are very well known to have very advanced zakat uh, 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 practices. I think UNHCR is yet to learn a lot uh, from them and. Uh, with the launch of the fund that actually uh, took, uh, took uh, place uh, this year, this is an open, let's say, invitation to to all uh, uh, the CAT uh, uh, institutions worldwide uh, to consider supporting uh, displaced people uh, through the UN. HCR, uh, the CAT fund. Right, Shadi, thanks very much for joining us. That is Shadi Grawi calling in from uh, Dubai. Thanks. He is in charge of the Islamic Philanthropic Program uh, of the uh, refugee body, United Nations UNHCR. Uh, we'll take a short break, but when we come back, we'll discuss at length about uh, the latest development regarding uh, the collaboration between Nestle and Starbucks. Don't go anywhere.